Hey everybody, uh, sorry, your normally scheduled Friday vintage video game review uh, didn't get posted on time today. It's because things be crazy, you know, started new uh, school year with students and everything this week. Uh, my classroom is still not together. Uh, we put an offer on a house. It got accepted, which is awesome, but it also means I'm going to be moving again before too long. Yeah, life gets crazy, gets in the way. But I still want to review a vintage game for you. It's going to get posted whenever I finish this review. And so hopefully we get a good one. Let's find out. This wheel is ridiculous. Ever since I uh, put all those DOS games on it, where it's now just as bad as my Steam wheel. Oh, Dragonfire. Okay. All right. Yeah. We're going to review Dragonfire for the 2600. All right. All right. So, Dragonfire by iMagic, released in 1982. You know, a lot of games uh, that came out on the Atari 2600, it was important that you read the manuals so that you understand what the game is trying to be. Uh, there was always su such a discrepancy between uh, the graphics on the box and the graphics in the game. Uh, if you've ever seen, there's a really cool coffee table book of Atari box art. Uh, because that box art was beautiful and amazing. Uh, and then you see what's actually in the game and you're like, well, what is this classic example adventure? Uh, where it's like, you know, dragons and dungeons and dungeony dragons. And then you play the game and the dragons look like ducks and your character is a square. And that's it. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's it's a whole thing. With Dragonfire, that is not the case. This is one of the better looking games on the 2600 where everything looks like what it's supposed to be. And nobody has to explain to you, like, okay, first of all, you're crossing a drawbridge of a castle and there are fireballs coming at you. And then... Once you cross the drawbridge, you are getting into the treasure room. You're trying to collect that dragon's hoard of treasure and then make it out in time to get back to another drawbridge <laughs> with more fireballs. And then if you make it past that, then you're in a different room with a different colored dragon, which is faster and more accurate at shooting you down and it just gets harder and harder and harder and there are i believe five levels i believe there are five levels i have never made it past level four i have never seen anyone make it past level four this game is hard like there you know we all know nes hard we all know that like old nintendo games were very difficult and, uh, yeah, one of the interesting things about that is that that's a holdover from arcade games. You know, the concept of you only have so many lives. That's because, you know, in order to keep pumping quarters into a game, you would only get so many lives. Uh, with Dragonfire, you get seven lives, which is a lot for the time. But you find out pretty quick that seven lives might not be enough. Uh, because, yeah, you take some cheap hits in this game. Super cheap hits, which, man, I hate cheap hits in a game. Uh, most of the time is going to feel like your deaths are your fault. Which is good. That's what it's supposed to be. You know, you are supposed to feel like, oh, I died. Well, I did something that I shouldn't have. You know, I jumped when I should have ducked. I ducked when I should have jumped. Uh, I came out of the hiding place too quickly, etc., etc. Like those kind of deaths I can handle and feel like, okay, there's a point. It is uh, what it is, and we just accept it and move on with the remainder of our lives. But yeah, 
it happens so frequently uh, that you get hit with a cheap death in this game um, that you just learn to roll with it. And here's the funny thing is I found myself just playing it again and again and again and being like, okay, one more. Okay, one more. All right, one more. And that is typically the sign of a really good game. Um, but yeah, this one is got a mix of the good and the bad. First of all, these are some of the best graphics on the 2600. I know if you are not someone who lived through the Atari 2600 era, you're going to look at these graphics and be like, these are good. This is what good graphics look like. Yeah. For this console. Yeah, absolutely. Everything looks like what it's supposed to look like. The drawbridge and the castle looks exactly like a drawbridge for a castle. The fireballs look like fireballs. Your character looks like a character. Um, I actually read the manual on this one just because I wanted to make sure that I was, you know, uh, that I wasn't missing a level somewhere with my terrible gameplay or whatever. It turns out my gameplay is not that terrible. It's that the game is so hard infernally hard um but yeah there, there's just two screens you know you make it past the drawbridge you go to the treasure room you beat the treasure room you go to another drawbridge that's the concept of the game and yeah i got reasonably far in it during the playthrough i don't know if you're going to see that portion of the footage because i recorded way more footage than i needed because i was having fun playing the game um but yeah when you get into those later levels that dragon which actually looks like a dragon it's not some sort of duck it is a legitimate dragon although a bit squashed and you know uh you have to look at it for a minute to be like, okay, I can see how that's a dragon. You know, it's pretty Atari'd up, but it is definitely a dragon. Um, yeah, when you hit those later levels, that dragon just comes at you. And uh, you're going to need luck in addition to skill. Uh, because when it sends up those fireballs one after the other, like hitting the gap in those fireballs is sometimes it just feels next to impossible. Uh, and so it's important that like, first of all, you stay hidden. Uh, there were a few times where I accidentally bumped the controller and um, I came out of the hiding place and I thought I was hidden because while you're hidden, the fireballs cannot touch you, uh, which is good. It's good that they give you a hiding place, which you can go back into when you are avoiding the dragon. Uh, and that's good that you have a place that you can duck into and not get killed immediately, especially in those later levels. But yeah, sometimes you just find yourself getting shot and you're like, what? I was out of the hiding place. Yeah it's kind of cheap that way and uh but once you get out of the hiding place in the treasure room you need to be in motion 100 percent of the time you cannot stand still for a single second you just frantically run around the room dodging all that fire and trying to grab that dragon horde uh, score some points and then make your way to the exit which only appears once you've collected all the treasure in the room um, so yeah sounds simple it's not it is not simple it is not easy uh, it is much harder than it sounds like is harder than it looks like uh, it is a legitimately difficult game um, but you know, I love these iMagic games. I always have. I, I think, uh, you know, in the Atari 2600 world, everybody knows that Activision, uh, was killing it so hard. Uh, just, just about every Activision game that was released, uh, was fantastic. And, you know, there were a bunch of other companies that were kind of hit and miss, 
uh u.s games you know kind of hit and miss uh they had some good ones they had some clunkers um but i magic is surprisingly consistent and i will tell you this if you are a collector of 2600 games you know what i'm talking about when i tell you that these games look slick when they are on your shelf um i don't have any boxed copies of imagic games um i think i have one boxed activision game i don't normally collect boxed games just because they take up more space and because it's much cheaper to just buy loose cartridges and uh, you get the same game that you can totally play and it, you know you get the same experience as the guy with the box uh, but yeah the guy with the box might not even play it because he's trying to you know keep everything in mint condition meanwhile the guy with just the cartridge can pop it in and be like all right let's play so yeah but these games look slick on the shelf they all have a silver label they all have that you know sort of 1980s uh multi-color like rainbowish uh thing going on on top of the silver label uh they all have amazing uh the the box art is also miniaturized on the label you got a big old dragon head breathing fire and whatnot which is actually you know more accurate to what the game actually is so hooray i magic you did a thing you did a good thing so yeah it's a simple concept you know dodge the fire collect the things make your escape simple simple idea but executed really well uh but also crazy hard and you will take some cheap hits that's unavoidable you can't not take some cheap hits you're gonna die and there are some of those deaths that you're gonna be like that was completely unfair <laughs> and that's the way it goes that is the way of a lot of 2600 games uh, you know, this is a part of gaming history, and so you kind of have to see how we evolved into our more modern concepts of, uh, you know, creating games that are still difficult, but are fair. Uh, because this one is just sometimes feels incredibly unfair. But, you know, with all of its flaws and all of its unfairness, uh, Dragonfire is a beautiful example of what the Atari 2600 is capable of. What it's capable of gameplay-wise and what it's capable of graphically. Um, so yeah, I, I just, I, I think this is a really, really good game if you want to show somebody what the Atari 2600 is capable of because you know I, I think a lot of people if you are not an Atari 2600 person your view of the console might be like oh look at their version of Pac-Man yeah you're right that's a terrible terrible port that is uh, quite frankly one of the worst ports ever made oh look at E.T. Yeah, E.T. is, it started a long, unhappy tradition of terrible tie-in games to movies. Uh, yeah, so there are the bad examples of what the Atari is capable of, and then there are the good examples, and this is a good example. But it's not perfect, and it is unfair. So it is one of those things where you kind of have to take the bad with the good. Anyway, let's take the bad with the good. I'll put a final score on it and then we'll wrap this up. All right. So for Dragonfire, I am going a 7 out of 10. Uh, I know it's a fun game, but also I was frustrated by the cheap hits. Uh, I know that it's technically impressive but I was annoyed by the cheap hits. So, um, yeah, it's fun, it's impressive, uh, but it's also entirely too hard and not very well balanced. So, you, you take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you have the facts of life. And the facts of life are that Dragonfire is a 7 out of 10, 
Duck Dragons from Adventure, also on the Atari 2600. We, we talked about that game. Gotta put them Duck Dragons in there wherever you can. Somebody get this freaking duck away from me. For sure. Anyway, people, that's going to do it for this one. I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.